Hello everyone, this is Robert and I hate every commercially available pegboard or wall mount screwdriver holder and I think I'm kind of fed up so it's time for me to design my own. So that's exactly what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and figure out a better way to hold your screwdrivers on a pegboard or on a wall. So this video is probably going to be a little bit weird and disjointed because usually when I approach a project like this, I at least do kind of a proof of concept before I start doing the video just to make sure there's some content there. But in this case, I haven't done anything. I have no idea where this is going to go, so buckle in for the ride. I started this whole journey um, when I redid this pegboard. Um, this is kind of my like workbench island that I did a long time ago. And I wanted to store all my screwdrivers here. As you can see, I have these stupid things. I hate them. I have the magnetic ones. I kind of hate those too. I'm setting up the workshop in our cabin, which is up in the mountains. And I have kind of you know, a little mini workshop up there. And I thought I'd try something different. So I got a bunch of these absolutely hate these. As you can see, I don't even have them installed. They are just absolutely terrible. So I need to find a better way for all of this to work. So let's take a look at kind of the different options and see what I don't like about each ones and what types of problems I'm trying to solve with each one. So for holding pretty much any tool on a pegboard, you have the hanger style, you have a magnetic style, and then you have some kind of clip style. That's really the only three ways you can do this. So I've got the hangers and then the magnetic over there. The hanger is fine. The problem is it's fairly limiting. Like this doesn't really fit there. It kind of fits there, but kind of flops around. And with smaller screwdrivers, it really doesn't work. So if I grab like these little guys, they're relatively thin. It doesn't really work well in there, not reliably. And that's kind of why I have the magnetic sitting over there. The magnetic is fine, but as you can kind of see, I have a mix of hex shank and round shank. And the problem with any round screwdriver is it doesn't really hold it in place. It works well for holding it, but they kind of slide back and forth. And so as you can see, just doesn't really hold them in place. And I'd really like to be a little bit more organized so I know that each one kind of goes in its own special spot. So neither of these is perfect. I think this is kind of like my best, but as you can see, it doesn't really sit the way I want to. And then we have the other ones. So I got this set on Amazon and I thought these would maybe be a little bit better. They just kind of have these little clips that you clip into. They kind of slide along a little bit and they're awful. Um, I don't think there's really just a good way to do this, at least the way I want. The big ones work okay with larger screwdrivers. It kind of snaps in place, holds it pretty decent, not a problem there. But the smaller ones also work okay. But then when you start getting into the smaller screwdrivers, this is the smallest one right here. It snaps in fine, but it doesn't really hold it because this gap is actually quite large. Even with, um, I think this is a Phillips one. It holds it okay but not great. And it's also kind of difficult to find which one is a space in between and which one is the actual clip. And then all of these things kind of slide around. So not really happy with that. On the big one, it does have a little bit more spring load in between each, but eh, it just doesn't really do what I'm wanting to do. So I'm not thrilled with that and it doesn't really work for anything small. So unfortunately, these are out. Okay, so now I've kind of identified the problem, identified what I don't like. Let's talk about some constraints. I could just go in and model every single one of my screwdrivers. They all kind of have like this hex up here that is used for kind of like torquing. Some of them have rounds, some of them have hex. Um, some of them even have this little collar right there. I could just sit there and model them all up and say, okay, this is a Phillips, make a rail for the Phillips and they all just kind of slide in place. But they really, don't want to constrain myself to where, you know, these have to go here. I would have a hard time deciding how many to put on one rail. Do I just want to put them all on one rail? It might only fit on this. And I also have my stubbies to worry about. 
and then also the really thin ones. I don't know if just having like a little thin hole that this drops into would be the right way to go. So that's kind of out. Um, secondly, with this kind of style, you know, to where you kind of click in, I just don't really like this idea because they can kind of move around. I want something a little bit more structured to where they kind of go in a specific spot. So I want both structured and flexibility um, because this is not all the screwdrivers I have. I have another drawer full over there that I just am not able to put up there. And then I have my workshop at the other house that has a completely different set of screwdrivers. So I kind of want something a little bit more universal. So the idea is to create something very universal that any screwdriver set could work. So as much as I'd love to have like perfect little cutouts for each one of these, there's also the idea of different diameters. They're all a little bit different of diameter. So I would have to kind of make sure that spacing is appropriate so that I can reach in and grab. This one isn't too close. All that stupid stuff. So I'm leaning towards the idea of using uh, one of these magnetic guys, but maybe creating some way to where they don't roll because that's really the only issue here. I like that they stick on. This is fantastic. That's great. And with the hex shank ones, that even works better because they don't roll as readily, but they can still do that. So let's make a mechanism that stops this from happening. So here we are inside SOLIDWORKS. As you can see, I've kind of made this little sleeve. The idea is that this will fit on the outside of that existing magnetic tool holder that I have. And then the screwdrivers will kind of rest in these little slots, which hopefully will prevent it from falling over. This is just a proof of concept. I just kind of want to see if this idea will work. I have some suspicions about the magnet strength and some other things, but hey, we got to start somewhere. So this is basically just the profile of the magnet and I just kind of have a sleeve that fits around it. And then for the little grooves, I just kind of made some assumptions. My biggest screwdriver has a diameter of about 38 millimeters. So I did this as 40 since the uh, pegboard is going to be back here. The biggest diameter was about 10 millimeters, just kind of a rough idea. So I decided to make these little triangle notches as just a pattern all along here. They only go in about two millimeters, about five millimeters wide, and they repeat every 10 millimeters. I figured eh, 10 millimeters might be good enough. So we're just making some assumptions, put a fillet on it just to make it look a little bit better and make it work better with the round and the hex. So let's get this sent over to the printer, print it out and just see how it does. The beautiful thing about 3D printing is we get to kind of iterate these things. So I'm just gonna print this out, see how it works, make some tweaks, rinse and repeat until we have a suitable proof of concept. So here is the test print. So the idea is this is our magnet bar, sits on top of it like that, just a proof of concept. And then we now have little slots or channels for this to fit into. The magnet is very, very weak at this point. I need to make some adjustments, but the spacing looks really good. Um, that's pretty decent. We can space this over here. The idea is I want to have one of these. I don't want to have like three different models for different sizes. I just kind of want one that's going to work with everything, but that looks pretty good. The spacing is good. It holds the big one, holds the small one. The problem is that the magnet's really weak and the channel itself really isn't that deep. It's not deep enough to kind of catch. So we need to make a couple changes. The two and a half millimeter fillet was a bit too aggressive. I'm going to decrease that. Going to get kind of more of a wider V or a deeper V to kind of grab onto these bigger hex ones. And also the distance from here to the bottom of those valleys is a little bit too much. I think it's, I don't know, three millimeters or something. We need to cut that down to as small as it can be without kind of poking through. We can go with a bigger magnet. Um, I'm probably going to end up just doing a custom magnet since I don't really want to mess with this, but we're just testing out the proof of concept. Everything else looks good. The 10 millimeter spacing is totally fine. It works with pretty much everything I have. The spacing looks to be pretty good. So I have no issues with uh, adjusting the spacing, but let's give it a little bit more magnet strength by compressing that down and then making these um, actually grab on a little bit more. And as you can hear, that one is printing right now. So a lot of time has passed since that last video clip. This was kind of the original proof of concept and I modified it into this. It looks very similar, but this has 
a lot more grab and bite to each one of the little sections, as you can kind of hear, versus this one just doesn't have much grab. So this actually feels really good. It grabs and bites on the big ones, grabs and bites really well on the smaller ones. But the problem I was running into is it really just doesn't have the magnet strength. I um, also shortened the distance from the magnet to here. And for the small ones, it holds okay, but they still kind of just fall off. Um, you couldn't use this horizontally, which was another idea that I had. It just doesn't really feel very secure. And I kind of suspected that going into it. These are usually very cheap ceramic magnets, and they're trying to kind of amplify the magnet power with um, this C-channel shape here. And they're really just not that strong. So I'm going to have to figure out a better way to do the magnet. So let's dive into that. As much as I'd love to do a This Old Tony style deep dive into magnets, this video is already 11 minutes and we got a long ways to go. So. I tried a few different things. I started out with these, which are 60 by 10 by three millimeters. And if we take two of those and just kind of rest them on the backside, whoa, easy there. It works okay, but it's really the bare minimum that I would want. And with the larger screwdrivers, yeah, it just doesn't feel right. It really can't hold the weight of the handle. So we need to go larger than that. I did a lot of research on um, haulback arrays and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, I had these on hand, but this alone wasn't enough and stacking two or three of these side by side really doesn't work out because of the way the magnetic field is positioned. So we need to go a little bit bigger. These are essentially the same magnet as these guys, but they're five millimeters. So we get a little bit more depth to them and we can stack and arrange these in interesting configurations. Let me show you. So as you can see, I have these two examples, both have three magnets, the um, 60 by 10 by five, but this one has them in a slightly different configuration. Technically these have about the same magnet pull force, but I actually like this one better. For this shorter one, it holds really nicely. Everything's fine, not a big deal. But when you go up to the larger screwdrivers, it just has a harder time finding the grooves because it's just much narrower. So it's just not as good with the larger diameter screwdrivers. Whereas this much wider version holds it a lot better. And I feel very confident doing even the largest of screwdrivers in this horizontal configuration. So I think I like the triple magnets stacked horizontally. So let me work up a final design for this thing. I'm waiting for the rails to finish, but I wanted to show you the mounting system that I came up with. So this is a clip. This would attach directly to your pegboard, these little automotive push rivets push those into place. This is on one inch center, so it should work with most standard pegboard. And then this is the feature that would be modeled into the actual rail itself. And it just slides down over top and clicks in place. I did a lot of prototyping to get this right because it was actually difficult to get it to where it would have no play you could mount this both vertically and horizontally, and just by pressing in these two tabs, the whole thing just slides right out. So I'm pretty happy with that. So let's wait for those rails to finish. So there it is. This is the final product. This ended up being about 10 inches long. Since these magnets are 60 millimeters, but the pegboard is on one inch hole spacing, 10 inch kind of worked out the best. That gives me a row of three, a row of three, and then the same thing on the other side. So it's 12 total magnets for this whole thing. And there's a little separator in the middle so that they kind of butt up like that. So there's a bit of a dead space in the middle, but it's right on top of one of these where you couldn't put a screwdriver anyway. The magnets just kind of feed in from one end. And they have these nice little end caps that just kind of snap into place with tiny bit of effort. So you got these nice little end caps 
and just a simple little M3 screw holds those in place. And of course, these things can just be stacked like that, and you can make these go as long as you need. And of course, on the back, we have all of the mounting features so that you can just put these clips directly in place, nice and simple. And these can be, of course, mounted horizontally or vertical. So let's get some magnets in here and get them installed. I'm gonna need to print out probably half a dozen of these things. So just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna install one of them and the location might end up changing, but you know, just for demonstration purposes, I'm putting one up here where I think it's gonna end up going. But the nice thing about these is you can really easily unclip them, move them to a different location and rearrange it. And that's one of the reasons I love pegboard so much. So I don't know about you, but I'm always getting new tools and kind of rearranging things. So whenever I put something on the pegboard, I know that it's not going to be permanent. I know that I'm going to go back and rearrange things and change things later. So this solution works perfectly for me because I can go back and change it and add things and remove things at any time. As you can tell by the smile on my face, I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. Not only did I get something that is better than my current solution, but it also is significantly denser in terms of tool storage. With a pegboard, I kind of like having everything very dense. Um, you hold a lot of tools in a relatively small location, and because you can hang these right side up and upside down because of these stronger magnets, it means that you can fit a lot more tools into a smaller area. So this is just all of my flat screwdrivers. Then on the other side of that, I can continue this along and do all of my Phillips and then my specialty nut drivers. And then I'll probably even end up doing all my Allen drivers as well. So I'll get a lot more tools in this same amount of space, which is ideal. Very, very happy with how this turned out. And all of these files are on printables. I also included the step files. So if you want to make your own modifications and do your own thing, um, I also included that over there, um, that little receiver piece. So all you need to do is do like a 75 by 27 and a half by seven and a half deep pocket. And you can just kind of integrate that receiver onto your design. So you can kind of get that little pegboard clip. So really happy with how all this turned out. As always, thanks for watching. Check out the printables link down below and I'll see you in the next video.